So Gordon, that was very uh, in informative about the actual area that we're at and you know, a little bit of the history about what kind of management that Mr. Carter had been following here on the farm. And that's a crucial portion of the actual assessment that we would be doing as well because we have a management history or interview with that producer. So that is that gives us a, an opportunity to find out more specific details that we could then use to consider while we're actually completing the assessment out in the field in the different managements. And we can take some, a little bit of time uh, just because you have an in-depth knowledge because you've already completed an interview with this producer. Um, but you know the, the questions that we'll look through is what is the specific crop rotation of the, the field that we'll be looking at? So um, corn uh, followed by soybeans and then in between the corn and the soybeans he'll do a, a usually a six to eight way mix, cover crop mix and he has experimented with cotton in the past as well. I think he only did one year of cotton. Okay. And then most recently he has uh, adopted wheat into his rotation as well to kind of give him some cash flow in the, in the off season. Okay. Also, um, in, in talking with that producer, does he have any tillage in his system? <laughs> Absolutely not, he, if he can avoid it. Um, he does do strip till with his planter, but I would consider it be more like a uh, in row subsoiler or no, t we call it a, a no till subsoiler type, very little disturbance, maybe only an inch, just the width of the subsoil and shank. Okay. So, but full width tillage. Um, by and large, he doesn't practice that and hasn't for most of the years that he's been farming. Recently, he uh, got a turbo till, and I know that sometimes can be a um, considered a tillage tool, which it is, but he, he uses it only to um, maybe pull, fix some ruts, or he's used it before, too, to terminate some summer cover and plant some, some fall cover behind that. So okay. it's not really a full inversion or mold board plow type. It would be thing. used in specific areas within a field. It's not correct. used across the broad field. That's correct. As a, a complete operation. I, I think that's important that we kind of identify those type of things because a producer may be calling one tool something and then we would need to assess as planners what the actual effects of that piece of equipment may do. Um, a lot of, of, of different pieces of equipment are named specific things that may think that it's conservation tillage um, or no-till or, or so on and so forth. So it's very important that we kind of get that information from the producer in that interview. Okay, moving along on this actual interview process, how long have you been in this management system and are you considering any changes? I'd say he's been in the management system currently with the cover crops for eight years or more and then as far as changes go, I would say, if anything, he may just um, switch crops, like he may drop the soybeans in a given year with cash prices and that type of thing. And then he's, he has picked up the wheat recently. So other than just maybe changing the species of cover crop or uh, adding a cash crop, depending on the value at the time of the markets. Um, but by and large, the, the management of the farm will stay the same with the multi-species cover in between your cash crops. Okay. And he has, he has experimented and still does plant some summer cover behind corn. If he gets his corn out early, he'll go in and stick a summer cover crop in there. So he keeps the ground covered all the time. Okay, that actually leads right into my next question. For how many months per year is the soil surface at least 75% covered with plants, residue, or mulch? Uh, oh, every month. Every uh, month? Yeah. Okay. So, Twelve and just months. looking around, maybe I'll answer this, but is any part of this operation or any of the cropland grazed? No, not no. currently. Are cover crops a consistent part of the cropping system? If yes, for how many years has the field been continually cover cropped? Uh, eight plus years. Eight plus years. Uh, so um, another question that we would ask, since cover crops are a big part of this uh, management system, would be how are these cover crops terminated? Um, in the past it's used a roller crimper, but um, most all the time it's followed with a uh, chemical kill. 
Okay. So a combination of methods, roller crimper, herbicide. Okay. Continuing on for the the producer interview, what integrated pest management strategies strategies are used? Crop scouting, selective spraying, treated seeds. Okay, so um, he does do scouting, pretty intensive scouting. In fact, he uses a consultant sometimes, but he also goes behind the consultant just to. He pushes his thresholds a little bit just to try to avoid spraying if he can. So that would be one. Um, so scouting, and then also he's used some um, pollinator strips around the edge of the field in the past. And um, he has experimented with not non-treated seed. Um, and then also he's reducing his uh, pesticide with regards to in the, in the soybean crop. Um, not trying not to spray for worms unless you really have to that type of thing so trying to reduce um, the amount of pesticide that goes or insecticide i should say that goes out he also um, most recently has tried to move away from glyphosate um, to terminate with okay uh, just building on that we talked about a little bit about pest management what about nutrient management strategies strategies are used on the farm so he's done some grid sampling in the past and then also um, zone management and then tissue sampling. Um, the farm does have a history of manure, so he obviously samples his manure and usually puts um, one ton out on most of his land. In the past, he's done two tons, but um, he's watching his phosphorus levels and making sure that he doesn't put out too much um, litter or phosphorus. Okay. Is there any application of any fertility, either banded or split application? With regards to uh, banding or fertilizer management, he does do split application of nitrogen. And then also he does some, um, he'll plant, put some nitrogen down shortly after planting and then he'll go back with his pivot for fertigation with the nitrogen. So that's a, a I guess a split application as well, but he uses the pivot when he can to put okay. that out. So, and he uh, has used some slow release um, nitrogen as well. Okay. To help with with nitrogen loss. Okay. So you talked a little bit about uh, fertigation. So that would usually be be put out, of course, with some type of irrigation system. Is the the field that we will be looking at to complete the assessment? Is it also irrigated? No, it's dry land. Okay. So while that field is is a dry land field, uh, ha has has it ever been noticed that water ponds or runs off during, during or immediately after typical rainfall events? In, um, in 2015, we had a, a 24 inches of rain in 24 hours, and, and so that, he obviously had some runoff then, but by and large, there's a bottom in this field that does get some, um, a little catch some runoff, but, but that's only in a very heavy rain event, but we won't be, where we'll be doing the assessment today is not in a b bottom or a pond. Okay. But that's very typical of Southeast to have um, either Carolina bays or other depressions that catch, you know, rainwater when we have heavy rainfall events. But the water doesn't stay there very long, so that's okay. that would be a plus, I guess, maybe. Has the producer made mention of any problems with crop emergence or early crop growth? And if he did, was there specific areas within the field that he indicated that was at? Um, by and large, I don't think he's had any emergence issues. He has precision planting equipment and also um, he does a good job of, you know, checking, calibrating his, his planter. So, but not, not any insect problems or anything like that to speak of. I can speak uh, that from uh, from personal experience, the past couple of springs have been really wet. Um, has this producer, in terms of water management being a concern, has this field, has he mentioned that it's been too wet in the spring when it's time to plant cash crops? If it, he uses the cover crop to manage that, so if it looks like it's gonna be a wet spring, he'll leave the cover crop growing, kind of like we see here. And so he'll go and plant his crop green or he'll terminate it right at planting. So 
if it's going to be a dry spring by contrast or he's planting a later crop he'll go ahead and terminate the cover crop but uh, for the most part he doesn't have any trouble getting in the field and the tractor can stand up very little ruts you know except maybe at harvest time when it, if it's real wet so he's kept his management pretty open and pretty flexible to be able to accommodate or, or work with the conditions that he has in the field. Correct. Um, so uh, in, in closing on this actual interview, uh, we have the opportunity to, to list any other observations not captured by the assessment or interview questions, um, including plant condition or, or recent weather and landscape characteristics that may affect the assessment results. So that I would kind of lean back to, you know, you said you mentioned there was a flood in 2015. Is there any kind of uh, uh, environmental or weather factors that have happened here recently that we should think about? Uh, he did notice time? after that flood there was some compaction. Um, I think that was primarily from rain, um, just a lot of heavy rainfall. And in the areas that's ponded, you know, that water sat there for for weeks before it went away. So that weight of the water, he did mention that that was a concern. But other than that, I haven't really noticed or he hadn't noticed any any issues. Okay. So Gordon, now that we have completed the management history interview with that producer's data and, and his information about his specific to his management, we'll actually take this and, and use this in completion of the, the management or the infield cropland assessment on this field. Once we complete that, then we can actually complete the assessment again on a different management to see how it compares.